welcome to Ask Charlie. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I make marmalade. I've been making marmalade for many, many years um, for my husband and he's going to be chatting to us later on about, about marmalade. But I need to get going with this. So I have got my marmalades weighed out here. One and a half kilos I use and I've got a large pan and I'm going to put three litres of water, basically five pints, um, in, into my pan with my oranges. So I've got all of my water in there. I'm going to put two lemons and then all of my oranges. And I have washed, um, I've sort of scrubbed them with a scouring pad, the skin of the oranges and the lemons. And they are just in the water there. I am then going to put my lid, which is here, on my pan. It's really important you have a lid on at this stage. I'm going to bring this to the boil on my aga and then simmer it for um, for about two hours. I want the oranges to be really, really soft. So between two to three hours, not less than two hours. So I'm going to bring this to the boil and then just pop it into here to simmer away and that is the first step now you can do this the day before um it depends you know how you are time wise i'm going to try and do this all in one day for you and show you sort of start to finish but often i'll start it off the night before it just depends how my diary is looking and what i've got going on but anyway as soon as that's come to the boil i will pop it into um to my simmering oven if you don't have an arga, then you can just simmer it on a low heat once it's come to the boil um, for, for a good few hours. I have got my I mean business apron on, which, which I put on when I'm doing serious things. And marmalade making is a serious thing. I have already made um, my, first, my first batch, um, which is here. This is Simon's batch. I always make my first batch for him, just sort of in old, old jam jars. <laughs> sort of big, big old jam jar for him. He loves his marmalade and he taste tested this this morning for me and was giving me his feedback. And I said, will you give that to me later and chat to everybody? So he, he promised that he would. So anyway, I can hear that that is beginning to heat up. So as soon as it's boiling, I will um, reduce the temperature. So we are boiling and in to the arga. Um, simmering oven. That goes. Make a note of the time and um, make sure that you that you keep an eye on the time. Set a timer is, is quite helpful, I always find. Alexa's not working at the moment, otherwise I would be setting her. Anyway, I will be back with you in um, a few hours time. Right, the marmalade has had nearly three hours. So, out it comes. It is smelling good. And it's basically oranges and two lemons in some hot water. So I've got a big glass bowl here and a slotted spoon. I'm going to set something in my glass bowl. And I'm just going, you can either just leave them to cool in the water. So you could do this part and then take them out and leave them and go to bed. Or, and I will tell you when I get to the next stage again, what you could do the day before. But as I mentioned, I'm gonna attempt to do this all in one day. Um, because, well, well, there's various reasons why I want to do that. Um, because, I want to get this video out to you as soon as I can, so you can make the most of the Seville oranges. Um, and also because I have got a lot of marmalade that I am endeavouring to make this 
uh, well, in the, the next few weeks. So basically the Seville oranges, let's talk about them, come from Seville and they are only available and ready and, um, you know, perfect um, for marmalade making for basically six weeks of the year, which is from the, about the first week of January through till mid-Feb at a push. But basically January is your time to make marmalade. And I wanted to make one batch. I do not discard that water. Keep that, let it cool and just set it to one side. Let your oranges cool. You can leave them just to cool in there or you can put them into a bowl and they'll cool slightly quicker. And we're going for the slightly quicker option today. Now I have already made a how to make marmalade video, which is on YouTube. Sorry. Florence, be quiet. There's nobody here. I'm sure there's no one here. Let me check. No, she's just barking for the sake of barking. I have already made a marmalade video and I love that recipe and I have made that recipe for many years. However, my last batch of marmalade of 2022, I did this method. And do you know what? It is slightly easier. I'm not sure it's necessarily any quicker, but it is slightly easier and I'm all about easier. And so I wanted to share this with you. Also, Simon told me that he preferred this method. He said it tasted better and he preferred the orange rind in it this way. So basically the other way is I cut the oranges before they're cooked and I slice up all the peel in its, um, you know, current state. Let me go. Um, you know, like this. These have obviously been in water for the last three hours. And so they've softened. And actually when they are softened, they are much easier and quicker to cut the rind up than doing it my way, my other way. So I think this is now going to be my new go-to method and I wanted to share it with you because um, it's all about easier and I love sharing. And you know, you can, you can try both and see what you think. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below um, because yeah, let me know. Anyway, um, what else was I going to say about marmalade? I think that's all at the moment, but um, I'm going to let these cool until they're cool enough to handle, which will probably be about 20 minutes, half an hour or so, and then show you the next step. I know what I was going to say. I was going to apologise for the washing behind me. Arch is about to head back to school and I'm trying to get everything washed and dried for him. So you will see various bits of washing hanging up there. But when these are in the agar, in the pan, the smells aren't really transferred. When it's bubbling and cooking on the top, and I've got that lovely rolling bubble uh, boil going on, I take the washing down. I might leave socks up there because it doesn't matter if they smell of marmalade, but Arch is definitely not going to want his hoodie stinking of marmalade. So you will see washing appearing and disappearing behind me. Um, and that's why you'll notice that even more laundry has appeared behind me. Now, I have got a glass bowl and a muslin. This is a muslin that I used for the children. It's very well worn. I've used it for a lot of preserving. I actually find baby muslins are better than the muslins that you buy for this purpose. So my muslin is in my bowl. I have got my big pan of water here, but I don't need that at the moment. I'm just gonna get another glass bowl. Oh, 
So there's quite a few glass bowls going on. But then you can see, make sure that you are sitting comfortably and I'm gonna pop that there. Now, my lemons, I am just going to slice this knife um, slice them in half this is a bit of a messy job and it's a little bit time consuming I want to take out a, as much of that um, pith and pips as I possibly can these are still a little bit warm but they're not too warm to handle so they've probably cooled for about half an hour now I think these knives, these are the Victorinox, uh, they're a Swiss knife, are perfect for this job. I want to take out as much of that pith as possible. So these are sharp, but they're not too sharp that they're gonna cut me, which is important. Now you don't keep your orange, um, your orange, <laughs> sorry, your lemon rind discard that but you want to keep all of your orange rind get as much of that pith out that is what contains the pectin and that is what we want and this is why and if you've watched my other method this is why this is much quicker because these are soft you are going to get mucky so you've just got to give in to that. Scrape as much out. I mean, you could really, really have a good scrape with your fingernails. Make sure that you've washed your hands. Um, and then you don't need to do this stage with a knife, but actually I think it's, I think it's easier. So just get as much of that as you can into your muslin. And it's important that your muslin is over a bowl because anything that comes through we will put into that big pan so um, that is important anything that's on your hands just scrape into your muzzy and do exactly the same thing with all your oranges and lemons so in that goes all the content it's very very important i know i keep repeating myself but you want to keep all the pips the pith all of that stuff and then have a good scrape out of that And I think the secret to making good marmalade is actually to take a bit of time here and get all of that out off your hands <laughs> and into the muzzy. It's a little um, slightly jelly-like. So just do, you know, and you, you might want to be, do this while you're watching telly, listening to a podcast, to have the radio on or something, because it's going to take, well, I will tell you how long it takes because I'll time it and as long as I'm not interrupted, between, depends how quick you are and how focused, but between 30 minutes if you're super speedy and an hour, I reckon. Um... Some people don't do all, um, or they don't slice up, that's the next stage. Um, they don't slice all the rind up. Now, even these little bits, I will just pull out and pop into my muzzy like that. Um, some people don't slice all the rind and pop that into the marmalade, but actually I find that you need it. Um, so it is important, I think, to do it all. But look, there's a million ways to, um, to do things. Everybody's got their own method. 
um, and their own way. And I don't think, you know, one way is necessarily better than the other. It's just personal preference, isn't it, really? And um, this is why I love these knives, because I know I'm not going to cut myself. They probably, um, they are quite old. You could put it down on the chopping board and just slice it that way. And you could just use, um, you know, a, a normal kitchen, um, you know, cutlery knife rather than, than one of these. That's why I, I go with a serrated one. Actually, I do think I need to invest in a new set. Um, but I know that I'm not going to cut myself, which is important. So you can, look, let me show you. If you get your nails in, you can scrape out a lot of that yourself. Um, I'm just pulling those stringy bits because you want it all. It all contains the pectin. See that one I've managed to scrape quite well. Um, you can always get a little bit more. Look, you've got that. Um, so yes, have something to do, to listen to or to watch while you are making your marmalade. Um, I've just finished watching Emily in Paris. So the orange ones that you were going to slice up, pop in your bowl there. The lemon ones, make sure you discard. Um, yeah, so I've just finished watching Emily in Paris, which, um, I don't even know, it's lighthearted. It's easy to watch. It's a chick flick. I wouldn't say it's one for the boys. It's not brilliantly acted, but it's it's enjoyable, lighthearted, um, you know, quite fun. Um, so I have just finished watching that. And I talked about um, in, I think, last week's blog um, that we would have watched Stone House. Right, I have got all my pith and pips and whatnot in my muslin. I have got those ready to be sliced up. I have a piece of string and we're going to gather the corners and then gather those side bits. Make sure that you tie your string around here and you've got all your bits tied up and there is no escape. Tie your string around your muslin tightly like so. Now let's adjust. Clear the decks. your pan with your water from earlier, add in any liquid that has dripped through, pull that in and place your muslin in your pan. Just pop it in there. Oh, somebody going for a hack. Put the lid back on your pan, bring this to the boil and then simmer for about an hour, however long. And while this is simmering, I'm going to slice these up. So get your orange bits and then just whatever sort of thickness you want, just slice them to that thickness. So I'm going for, it's a little bit tricky to show you, but that sort of size. And I find that once these have boiled, it's much quicker to slice them up. Um, 
and particularly you know the longer they boiled the softer they are they just sort of almost fall to pieces these probably could have done with another another hour um to have been even softer but i wanted to show you how to do it in a day so the this batch that i made here for sai um those i did i boiled them and then i left them overnight um and they just got even softer but it's fine these are still much quicker to slice up than the other way and you know just work out what sort of size shreds you want i mean that is too long and again it's a good opportunity to listen to something um to watch something while you're doing this it's a little bit difficult to watch because you've got to keep a close eye while you're cutting but it's a perfect opportunity to listen to something so anyway i am going to crack on and get these all sliced up i can hear that that is almost coming to the boil behind me so i shall pop it into the art there with that muslin bag and just leave it there for about an hour or so until uh, basically until i've sliced all of these right that has come to the boil with the muslin bag in so in that goes to simmer away while i continue cutting up my shreds so um yes the washing won't be too affected there behind me i also need to cook lunch the boys are here and um yes it's almost lunch time Mr. Marmalade is here to give us his um, his take on marmalade, my marmalade, and all the rest of it. Well, I've been roped in on this one um, about a subject very close to my heart, which is marmalade. And marmalade is just one of those things that it's either, well, for me, it's either right or it's wrong, and there's nothing in between. Um, and I'm always exasperated when I go abroad somewhere and they produce something which they call orange jam or whatever it may be because it's nowhere ever close um and charlie knows i get quite grumpy if she sells all the marmalade so do please don't please come online and start ordering it all because there'll be nothing there for me <laughs> it gets really grumpy i have to have a special section for marmalade just for simon to get you through the entire year don't i Definitely. And definitely. occasionally you give a jar to a friend. Yes, a very good friend. <laughs> um, but the thing about marmalade is that, you know, it's like one of those things. It's, a, it's, it's obviously something for breakfast. And breakfast to me is about, you know, setting, it sets up the whole day uh, in a gastronomic way and in every other way too. So it's rather like having a badly boiled egg or burnt toast. It just, you know, it just doesn't set you off in the right direction. And marmalade is exactly the same. An indifferent marmalade, um, you know, is is just um, not where you want to be at all with your breakfast at ten in the morning. Yes, and I wish it was at ten in the morning, it's more like seven. But anyway, um, but um, so um, w with the marmalade, I think the real key, and I was just talking to Charlie about the the flavours in marmalade and and what it should do, and you get this sort of you know marmalade. It starts off with a sort of a a sweetish start, orangey, clearly, but it's a slightly sweet start and then moves into that bitterness, which really is what it's all about. That lovely sort of bitter, citrusy, orange, a bit of the lemon juice coming through and then finishes on that sort of sugar sweetness just to, to finish it off. And I'm going to try this. And I think there's a little bit of tartness towards the end mm. as well. A good thick um, peel, probably I'm probably one or two of you might remember Robinson's marmalade, um, and um, it was always very sugary, with a very sort of thin, skinny, indifferent um, peel to it. So this has got a nice darkish colour, um, and it, it good size peel without being sort of 
I'm still yeah, slicing. without sort of being too thick and long and chewy. What do you reckon like that? Something like that, yeah. But it really is all about those flavours and it's about that that bitterness which tastes so good on toast with a alongside a cup of strong coffee or PG tips or whatever you like in the morning, whatever your morning tipple is. Um, <laughs> so your, that's me. What's your morning tipple? Well, I start off with tea and then move on to coffee. Yeah. Um, but we're all different. We are. Um, but anyway, there we are. That's my thoughts on marmalade. And Charlie does a brilliant marmalade. Thank um, you, I'm sure it'll be winning prizes in the village show. <laughs> 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 Thanks, darling. I am just cutting up the final shreds and it has taken a lot longer to cut them up than normal because I had a delivery that arrived. I had um, lunch to cook for the boys. Simon unexpectedly came back, um, but we got to chat to him about marmalade. He's so funny. He does make us chuckle. He had us all in stitches at lunch. Um, so yes, it's taken slightly longer to cut these up, but that is fine. Um, the washing is dry behind me apart from a pair of socks. So those are all the shreds. I have, there are a few little bits which I have discarded. I'm quite particular. So into that bowl, they all go. I'm just turning my knife upside down so I don't blunt it. To scrape in those shreds. Now I've taken my pan out of the simmering oven of the aga. I have got a sieve and I'm gonna try not to burn myself. Um, I, have asbest I have asbestos fingers and I'm just going to plonk that in there and let it drip and let it cool enough so I can hold this. And um, then I feel like I keep saying this and then I'll show you the next step. But I'm just gonna put those to one side. I'm gonna clear the decks, pop this tea towel in the wash and just um, let that cool. Right, <laughs> the next step. Once this is cooled enough to handle, you want to take it out of the strainer and again this is so something you want to be interrupted doing you don't want the phone to ring or somebody to knock at the door you want to squeeze everything you possibly can squeeze out of your muslin so i'm just starting with the long ears and then i'm going to twist and twist and twist and you want to squeeze your hands may hurt and um i'm not going to say that's a good thing because you don't want to hurt but it is you want to get it all out and it's going to take at least five minutes of squeezing so can you see i can't really Let's see if I can bring you up close. Can you see the kind of jelly-like consistency that is coming out? Can you see it running off my hands? That you want to get as much out of as possible. So you really want to twist it and then run your hands down and squeeze, 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 and get as much of that in to your pan as you possibly can. And so far I've been squeezing for almost two minutes. And so I reckon it is probably five minutes of squeezing. The more you get out, the better. It's also quite satisfying. I am finally home at
when you squeeze as much as you possibly can out, wipe it off your hands. Make sure that you have washed your hands before you start this process. Um, get it all off and then you can go wash the excess off your hands before you do the next step. Right, the next step is sugar. And I just use regular granulated sugar and I use, it is a ridiculous amount, an absolutely ridiculous amount, um, 2.5 kilos. So it's a whole bag and a bit more. So I'm just gonna tip this straight in. Now, some people say to warm your sugar. This has been sat in the kitchen on the island, not far from the Arga, and it's warm enough. One of the reasons why they say to warm your sugar is because it dissolves quicker. Um, but I have found warming your sugar doesn't make that much difference. So I think it's one step that you can avoid. So I'm just gonna weigh out the other 500. and tip that into my pan. Now, one thing that is very, very, very important is to slowly, slowly, slowly let this dissolve on a low heat. You do not want to increase the temperature um, and bring it to the boil until all the sugar has completely dissolved. So I'm gonna pop this on to my agar. on the low heat and give it a stir. And I'm going to just let that probably have 15 minutes on there, um, stirring it from time to time until everything has completely dissolved before I increase the temperature. You don't want to rush it. You do not want your marmalade to burn, particularly when you've got to this stage. You know, it's quite, it's quite an effort. You also need to add in your shreds. So I'm gonna add those in now as well. And give it a good stir. Discard what's in your muslin, but you can, you can reuse the string and then just wash out your muslin, put it through the washing machine and you can use it again the next time. So you can keep it. And that's why, as you saw when I started my muslin, it is a bit marked, but that muslin has made hundreds of jars of marmalade over the years and they last, you know, time and time again. I haven't bought any special muslins for preserving. I've just used the children's one. So that one is about 14 years old, actually. So the sugar has completely dissolved and now it's time to increase the heat. So I've just put it onto the hot ring, but I don't want to boil it too quickly to set a point. I believe that, actually it's a little bit difficult to talk to you while it's boiling, hang on. Just moved you over here because I don't want to compete with the sound of that coming to the boil. I believe that if you let it boil for longer, so let me explain that. I could bring this to the boil, I could get it to a rolling boil and I could get it to setting point in probably 20, 25 minutes, something like that. However, I think for depth of flavour, you want it to be um, boiling for longer. So I don't want it to be fast, fast boiling. I'm just going to, I'll, sh I'll show you exactly what I mean. Sorry. A pair of socks which are probably dry now they're my riding socks um yeah so I could do it quite quickly but I think you get better flavor if you let it um bubble away for longer but also you don't want it to burn so again it's something that you need to sort of be pottering around maybe just tidying up a little bit maybe washing up putting things away and just sort of be in the space, keeping a close eye on it, stirring it from time to time. I think the more you stir it, the more scum you're likely to get on the top. 
but again you don't want it to catch so I don't want you standing here constantly stirring for 20 minutes or however long I just want you from time to time to stir it like maybe I don't know every 10 minutes something like that and just make sure that it's not catching on the bottom of the pan that is really important it's not yet boiling but when it is I'll show you the sort of boil I want to have and I'm expecting that it's going to be about an hour so I'll have it doing a steadier boil for like the first 30 minutes and then I'll increase it so then I'll get to setting point but I'm going to talk you through the whole process. Now at this stage you need to put a plate preferably two small plates in the freezer. You might think you're your bonkers but it's really crucial for your set test that you've got a plate. Um, I think it works best when the plates are in the freezer. That's what I always do. So it's not far off boiling. Hopefully you can see that kind of boil. That's a boil that I want for about 30 minutes. And if it starts to get more ferocious, which it will, I will just move it slightly to the side like that. Sorry, it's really difficult to show you what's happening in there and talk to you at the same time. Obviously, if you don't have an Olga, you just turn down the heat a little bit, but I don't want a really ferocious boil at this stage. I just want it to be a sort of a boil <laughs> but not a rolling boil and we'll talk about the rolling boil a little bit later on. This has been bubbling away for about 30 minutes on what I would call a gentle boil. I'm going to bring you over and show you in the pan so you can see exactly what I mean. I'm now going to increase the temperature and get it to a really really good boil. I have got my jam jars at the ready they are all washed and clean and dry and i'm going to actually pop them into my baking oven of my arga so that's about 160 degrees approximately um and heat them up and that makes them completely sterile when i put my marmalade in i can then just screw the lid on i don't need to put a wax disc and that's how i do all of my jam making chutney making into hot jars. I'm not going to put them into the oven just yet because actually my marmalade needs to sit once it's ready. So just when it's beginning to come to setting point, I will put them in the oven. But I'm going to take you over and show you the, the boil that I've got going at the moment. So it's just a kind of gentle boil. Forgive the dirty arga pan, um, arga cover but actually when I'm doing this sort of cooking I don't want to have nice sparkly clean new ones on so I've just got my kind of workhorse ones my workhorse apron I mean business um, I'm going to just move this over to increase the temperature so the great thing about an arga is you've got a hot spot which is normally people's hot spots can vary but it's normally right in the center in fact let me show you um that <laughs> There is my hot spot. A little drop of jam, um, of marmalade even, has dripped off my spoon. So that was the burnt bit that you could see. But this is going to come up to a rolling boil in a minute, probably. And then I'm gonna keep an eye on it and expect to do my first set test after about 10 minutes. So I've got this lovely boil going on. You can see when I stir it, it gets a little bit more excited. But I'm just stirring it from time to time just to check that it's not catching on the bottom. And it's probably had about five minutes like this. So in another five minutes, I'll just put my spoon in and just see what I think it's looking like. I can tell when it's almost ready by the consistency of it, but that's years of experience. Um, but I always do a set test to make 100% sure. I've got this wonderful boil going and I'm going to do my first set test. So I've got a big spoon here and, I'm, and my plate from my freezer. I'm just going to scoop a small amount onto my plate and I'm actually putting it 
of the bottom of my plate. And I'm going to make sure that I put this in the freezer in a certain way so I know which set test that is. And you can either you know, turn the plate clockwise or anti-clockwise or however you wanna work. I'm gonna put this with its head pointing, well it's not its head, it's the foot of the plate pointing into my freezer. For about 30 seconds, I've been talking to you, so it's probably already doing its thing, but I'm gonna put it in the freezer and then just, well, I'll bring you back and show you. This has been in the freezer for about 30 seconds. I was chatting to you too much. Now, to do your set test, you want to run your finger. Now, that is way too liquidy. So we are, <laughs> taste it. We are a while off. So I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. 10 more minutes and do the next set test after 10 minutes because we're a long way off. When you do your set test, if it starts to wrinkle, you know it's it's ready. But I will show you that bit up close. <laughs> but it tastes good, so that's a bonus. I'm gonna put my plate back in the freezer and that's why you want to have a few plates just in case you end up, you know, if you're not that confident and you want to do lots of set tests, you've got a spare plate ready to go. Um, which is which is important. Something else that's really, really important is don't think about trying to double the recipe because it will have way too much volume and it will be overflowing your pan. I am using my largest Arga pan and the reason why I make my marmalade in this is because it's got a lid and I don't want any, when I'm boiling those oranges the first time round, and then simmering them. I don't want anything to evaporate, which is why it's important to have a pan with a lid. And so you've got to make sure that you've got a big enough pan. If you don't have a lid for your pan and you're using a preserving pan, you could use tin foil and maybe like two layers of tin foil and make sure it's really tightly wrapped around and nothing um, can evaporate out. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this back in the freezer and set my timer for 10 minutes. This is beginning to look a lot more like it. So I'm going to just put my jam jars into the oven now. Now is the time I get everything ready. Please see, little Florence down here, Coco's walking boots are drying out from her, um, her school field trip. Um, so I'm gonna get the plate out of the freezer and we will do another set test, second set test. So I'm going to work around my plate clockwise and I'm just gonna pop a dollop of marmalade on there. This is beginning to look like it's not far off being ready. Sorry, <laughs> all the washing over there. I'm gonna pop this back in the freezer and be back with you in a mo. So it's quite good having a patterned plate. I can see that it's that set test I need to check. Now, let me bring the plate up close and my finger, and it is just beginning to wrinkle, only just. So I think this probably needs about five, I'm gonna set the timer for four minutes and check it and do, do a third set test then, but we're not far off being ready, which is exciting. Right, we're going for the third set test and I am popping it up at the top of my plate. I think this is looking very, very, very promising to be ready, if not very, very nearly ready. Anyway, I'm gonna whack this back in the freezer and um, then we'll test it in a mo. Right, here it goes. So, all the dogs have run at the crucial moment. Did you see that wrinkle? That is done. That is absolutely perfect. Really yummy. Um, I am now going to take this, I'm actually gonna give it a quick stir. I'm gonna take this off the heat. We are at setting point, And I am going to leave it to settle for about 20 to 25 minutes. It is really important that you let your marmalade settle before you jar it. Now, when you are making jams, chutneys, anything else, you don't have to let it settle. You can just jar it immediately. 
but to get the shreds evenly through you need to let it settle and there is some scum on the top but that may disappear um disperse i should say as it settles and i it's already sort of beginning to i can just see the shreds coming through i'm going to check the time set a timer and um then we will jar it my jars are still in the oven it took slightly longer to come to setting point than i thought it was going to so i probably put my jars in slightly earlier than i needed to you could put them in at this stage when you take it off to settle um but i'm just gonna leave it set my timer um i've got lots of washing up to do so i'm gonna crack on and get that done and then i will be back with you to show you how i jar it the marmalade has settled for 25 minutes. My timer has gone off. I have got my jam jars out of the oven and I think a jam funnel is an essential bit of kit and a jam ladle. I've also got a slotted spoon and a bowl here. And I do have, as you can see, a little bit of Gum on the top, which it's not going to be so easy to take off because there are shreds in there, but I am just going to try to take off what I can. I'm going to lose some shreds, but that is okay. And just try and get as much of that scum off as you possibly can and that way when you mom when you jar your marmalade it will be nice and clear if you've got the scum in there it will be um it slightly cloudy i'm not check that out i think that is fine so put that to one side make sure that you've got a tea towel to hand and your jam lids and you want to work quite swiftly here, ladle up, actually there's a little bit of scum there, but it will be fine, um, your ladle and then in to your jars it goes and you want to fill your jars right to the top and then just move your funnel to the next jar. I always put extra jam jars in because you don't want to run out of jam jars. It's much better to have too many that you've sterilized and that are ready to go than be scrabbling around having run out of jam jars. So that is another top tip. I'm aware that this is quite a long how-to video, but I wanted to share with you exactly you know, how I do it and every step to give you the confidence to give it a go. I'm going to screw the lids on those in a moment. If you end up with um, not enough marmalade to fill a jam jar, then I'm just going to use a ramekin and so I will enjoy this first um, because I have not got enough white now you don't always get scum so don't be surprised if you're scumless it's fine sometimes it happens sometimes you get more sometimes you get less it just depends um on on all sorts of factors but i've got my jars all there let me just move you down and now i need my tea towel and it's time to screw the lids on and again you want to do this quite swiftly so tightly screw your lids on and your jars might need a wipe if you've dribbled a little bit down the sides which again can happen we've got to be careful because it's piping hot but there is a jar 
of my marmalade done. I have just, um, sorry, Tess is running around the place. I have just um, put my rubber gloves on. You've got to be so careful not to burn yourself and wiped all the jars down um, in case there's anything sticky on them. I find it easier to do it actually while they're warm. It comes off quicker once you've left it to cool. It's even more sticky. But that is how I make my Seville orange marmalade, but the other way. Um, and actually, I find this way easier. It is a lengthy process, but it is so delicious. You can see how much my husband loves it. So um, it's a labour of love, but absolutely worth doing. And actually, out of curiosity, I had a look at Mrs. Beaton's everyday cookery book at her marmalade recipe. Her marmalade took four days to make. The principle is actually jolly similar. I don't know if I can remember. Is it 437 off the top of my head. Um, the principle is very similar. No, I can't, I can't remember the page number off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, she does it over four days, but it's, it's, basically the same sort of thing. I think all the recipes are very, very similar, um, but people just have their preferred method. And I think, hang on, I'm gonna find it and tell you exactly, because it's now bothering me, of why she leaves it for um, four days. Okay, so she uses 12 spill oranges, two lemons, preserving sugar. Slice the fruit finely, removing the inner pith and pips. Weigh it. She does a lot of weighing it and then she uses the weight of that to the amount of water. Let the whole remain covered in an earthenware vessel for three days. Then turn it into the preparation, then turn the preparation into a preserving pan and boil gently until quite tender. Let it cool, weigh it again, and each pound of fruit add one pound of sugar. Bring it to the boil, skim well, and cook gently until the syrup stiffens quickly. Then test on a cold plate. Turn into pots, cover with paper brushed over on both sides with the white of an egg and store in a cool, dry place. Time altogether four days. Average cost about um, two d. So what's that? Is that two? It's not two pence. It's for, I don't know. I should. That's really bad. Um, two d per pound. I'm going to need to look that up. But I love the fact that she works out how much it costs per pound. Anyway, that is how I make my marmalade. I hope that you have found it helpful. Um, I hope that you enjoy making some Seville orange marmalade this season and thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon. Oh, oh, of all the